Yo, this is super cool. All of the Generation 8 Pokemon done in a Generation 1 pixel art style with the Pokemon yellow version color palette. It's amazing. No wonder it went viral. 12,000 likes, 3,000 retweets. This is spot on. Now, I haven't closely looked at all of these just yet. I want to do that for the video. But just glancing at this, it makes Generation 8 feel nostalgic. It feels like I'm playing a Game Boy version of Generation 8. So I want to take a closer look. But first, shout out to Pat Ackerman, Pat's Pixels on Instagram. He's the incredible artist that has worked on this and done it. It looks like there were a couple of oopsies though. I messed up. Here's all of them. Forgot low-key toxicity. Now we have all of them. And then they went and plugged their Twitch channel. I'm not against that at all. If you make something this amazing, you deserve the content creation glow up. So also, if you think what this person is doing is amazing, go and follow them on all of their socials and their channels. But now let's go and check out these individual Pokemon because this right here is amazing. It feels like I'm holding a Game Boy and one of these creatures is jumping out at me. It's that good. Now, I feel like this is going to be really interesting for me personally, because I'm getting that nostalgic kind of vibe, even though I didn't like most of the designs from Generation 8. So I think as I go through this, it's going to be a Generation 8 retrospective. Can a reimagining or like a... I'm trying to like figure out how you how you classify this, what you call this. Like, if going back to the original art style of Pokemon makes me feel different about some of the newer Pokemon that I didn't like. Fortunately, all the Pokemon on screen right now, I didn't hate as much as I did for the rest of Generation 8. So it's going to be pretty interesting. However, the Grookey line, this feels like a starter progression. And I really find it funny, like in back in the early days when you're just dealing with the original sprites and pixels and stuff. If you get a really bulky, fat Pokemon, it just kind of like takes up its space. But it can be done in a really cool way. Like, you can see what this Pokemon is, what it's trying to do. Rillaboom makes sense right here, but it also has, like, this menacing monster kind of shape. And that kind of fits in with the whole pocket monster theme. So, that line looks really good. Looking at Squovet Greedent, yeah, that feels like your early game kind of basic Pokemon going in. The, the only thing that's unfortunate here is that with Rookity, the effect of its eyes is kind of lost. Like, it's not as neat in that way, but still looks like a good, cool bird Pokemon. Now, I'm excited to see what Corviknight looks like, so let's go and scroll on through. Let's pull up some of these other Pokemon, and it's not as cool as I thought it was going to be. You know, it kind of has that Skarmory. It feels like an upgraded Skarmory kind of feel, but it doesn't have, like, that, that posture. It doesn't have that intensity that you get from Corviknight. It's still a cool Pokemon, but as we can see, there are some some moments where like the 2D pixel art is better, and then there's also gonna be times where you can represent a lot more in 3D. Uh, Corvusquire, also kind of weird with the eyes, trying to do its best there. But at the same time, like this feels like how it would look in the original Pokemon games. But man, that 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 almost feels perfect when you when you look at the Score Bunny line. Like I would imagine Score Bunny derpily jumping out at me like that because that's how some of the generation 1 Pokemon look. They look like they're just having too much fun and that is what we what we see right here and then Cinderace big foot kick fire. Yeah, that works pretty well. Never like Blip Bug. This just makes it look like a bug from an early Pokemon game. So, that's a thing. Ooh. Ooh, that is too cool. So this made me feel like I was actually going up against Misty for the first time again. Seeing Starmie for the first time was like, whoa, that's a thing. And then seeing Bubbles like shoot out of it was su such a crazy thing for me as a kid. And I kind of got a hit of that where you have these exaggerated features to really make Inteleon fit in. That same time I'm like, oh, you're about to get like Bubble Pistol and it's going to be crazy. Um... Wasn't, like I said, I wasn't really too much of a fan of Sobble and its evolution. Uh, I don't even know its name because I don't care enough for it. You know, the way that Sobble was, like, introduced, it just looked too sad for me. I didn't really like its face too much. But Inteleon is, like, one of the best designed starter Pokemon. But the rest of the line's like, yeah, it's kind of whatever. Kind of cool we're doing this. Um, this looks like a Pokemon. Like, it looks like some kind of creature thing but i still don't like any of the orbital line and then nick it yeah that's like your little fox pokemon that you're expected to find so let's go and hop down here thievil though thievil once again it feels like a bigger fox pokemon that's going to be doing its thing and then eldegoss florgus i'm getting attacked by a leaf and it feels like it feels like it's happening back in pokemon yellow version so this 
is interesting. I feel like that's too much animation. Like, you wouldn't see the movement of the roly coly. I feel back in those, like, earlier games and stuff, you don't really capture too much animation inside of those earlier pixel arts and stuff. Um, Carcoal. Yeah, I mean, like, this looks alright, because it's kind of, like, toned down. It feels more like a golem. It feels more like a Rhydon or something. But it, it even then, like, the design's like, eh. Not really, not really feeling it too much. Wooloo. Wooloo just sitting there being cute, fluffy. Double being there, being bigger, fluffy. Uh, the apple line. All right. Um, it it almost feels the same in, in a kind of interesting way, but still pretty cool. I like Flop. Flop was like, yay! Hey! Hi! You know, stuff like that going on. Uh, that looks stupid. I would be offended if that popped up at me inside the games. So I don't like that. Yeah, I just don't get the can opener head. Like, that's why I was never really sold on that Pokemon right there. Uh, let's see, we got Sanaconda. I, I could see that. It's like, oh, we got a snake attacking me. Oh, we got a big curly snake attacking me. And then Yamper looks all right, but we have Bulltown. And Bulltown just looks like such a good boy. I love it. And this is amazing. Cramorant with Goldeen. That is is how you represent like that's what it would be like like let's just say instead of Erokuto we had Goldeen or like makes sense in its own kind of way if you're trying to reimagine and re-represent because I'm pretty sure we're going to see Erokuto we're going to see the other Pokemon oh did I not oh I was about to say did I scroll down too far did I not scroll down enough yeah there we go like Erokuto he looks happy I like it interestingly enough I like Barrascuta more in this in this kind of design because for me Barracuda's face is just kind of like stupid looking in 3d and I really didn't like the Pokemon because of that Eric could look so happy and had so much potential and I feel like a lot of it was squandered I like the idea the propeller tail how it's shown it's like oh this thing is gonna be like a Barracuda that just like pierces the water like an arrow and spears you to death yeah that that's a thing that happens but I think they went for that over design that's why I don't like about you know, Generation 5, Generation 8, there's too much unnecessary over-design, and I think it kind of ruined that Pokemon. But with this, it kind of feels like you're, you don't see it as much. So it's like, oh yeah, we have some kind of creature here, is how it's being represented. Poltegeist, that, that's just happy. He's even got like a little, like a little dainty, like, hey, you know, I'm, I, I'm tea, come and drink this kind of thing going on. So we got that. Uh, didn't really care for the hat line too much. It looks almost the exact same, which is kind of crazy. Uh, also didn't like Toxel at all. Toxtricity is pretty cool. So we got Toxtricity representing. Uh, didn't like the imp line. Didn't like th that. That still looks stupid. That 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 one. I, I forget its name. That one still looks stupid. Sizzlepeed and Centiscorch. Yeah. But at the same time, this this does feel like again, it's just keeping with that Generation One theme so well. Like there are Pokemon that have these exaggerated coming at you kind of poses in that sprite art, and yeah, that's how I'd expect Toxtricity all zapped up and looking cool like that. Uh, Clubopus, nah. Grappalox, nah. That that just looks wrong. That just looks like some kind of tormented, sad creature. Sinistee is effectively what you can expect from a teacup if you're trying to put it into 2D pixel art, so that's a thing. Uh, Galarian Light Noon kind of gets lost. I, I get, you know, it is pretty hard when you're just dealing with, like, black and white and something that you have to, with a lot of black. You know, it's not just, like, a black outline and then a couple of things. There's a, there's a lot of black on that Pokemon, so it just kind of, like, fades into itself. You can see, see a little something there. Zigzagoon. I guess with like some of these older form Pokemon, it's like, well, we actually know what Zigzagoon looks like, so we can effectively kind of get the same thing out of it. It's really going to come down to the Obstagoon looking amazing. I like it. Trying to go for, you know, some kind of like cat pose right there on the Galar Meowth. Didn't like Galar Meowth. Didn't like Berserker. But hey, at least we get one Stink Eye Pokemon, dude. If you look at some of the earlier Pokemon, like, I don't remember if it was Jigglypuff or Wigglytuff. That, that Pokemon's eyes are messed up. But if you can see right here, like, yeah, Berserker looks a little, little crazy. A little, little twisted right there. He's about to carve you up. Uh, Mr. Rhyme, stupid. Darumaka, stupid. Darmanitan, stupid. So, can't really change too much about that. However, I will say, I do like the other form. Like, it, when it when it goes into its Zen mode. I like that of the Galarian Darmanitan. But I don't like Galarian Darmanitan itself. Sad Corsola is sad. That is pretty hard to do when you have limited pixels and palette and you can't do transparency or anything like that. Yeah, how would you represent Corsola? 
I guess that's that's about it, but it is kind of lost as to what could be going on here. I'm like, maybe it not looking straight on at you, but then you can, can't do the little sphere of, like, the Corsola head inside of it. So that's kind of tricky. That, that's just reminiscent of Farfetch'd, but with the different pose because of how it's run in its different leak. So that's cool. Yeah, Mass, Kafagrius. Kafagrius looking cool. Kafagrius is a cool Pokemon. Like, if I saw that jump at me in Lavender Town, I'd be like, ooh, it's on. I'm catching you. That's spooky, spooky. I like it. All right, Surfetch is cool. I like that pose. Stungfisk. Like, Stungfisk is actually represented here pretty well, even though it's stupid. But it's like, yeah, it's a, it's a trap. It's going to bear trap you, and you can even see the footprints. Like, you can make out the details that show what this Pokemon is about. Glar, Mr. Mon, whatever. The Weezing is cool. So, again, it looks like Weezing, but it's got a top hat now. It's got those extra features in it. Ponytail is cute. Uh, Galar and Rapidash looks like it wants to inflict pain. Um, I think the big thing about these Pokemon is that they're about the weird colors and looking as pretty as possible in 3D. But in the 2D, it's like, yeah, it, it looks like, you know, some like Ponyta or Vulpix or some kind of representation like that. However, if this jumped out at me, I wouldn't be like, oh, that's a Ninetales. Oh, that's a Rapidash. Oh, that's an Arcanine or something. You know, because I'd imagine this on the route between Saffron City and Lavender Town, I would find this Pokemon here. Even though it kind of goes against the Glenwood Tangle lore. But, you know, that's where that's why I feel like that would jump out at me. And it just doesn't... Maybe it's like the leg. Maybe there's too much fur going on. So, once again, I think the Game Freak overdesign showing that's kind of hindering how some of the Pokemon can be represented. Ooh, and now we get to think about pure Fairy-type Pokemon being represented in that Generation 1 kind of way. Because I think that gets across right here with the all-creamy line. So, that looks pretty cool. And even though... I don't like fail links. I thought it had potential. I was enjoying using it for competitive or at least for like the battle tower because it carried me pretty much through all the ranks and all the challenges of the battle tower because it was kind of neat like that. But even though for its like design, for its theme, I don't think it's a Pokemon. I don't think it fits into Pokemon. They made it work here. It's like, oh, you can actually see these are individual dudes running around doing their own thing. That's kind of cool. Ice Cube is stupid. Like, are, like it could be less stupid if the face just didn't look like that. I like the theme here, though. Like, you can see that something has happened. Pokemon is vulnerable, and you need to kill it before it sets up hail, it gets its face again, it starts using sub and protect, and then stalls out the game through some kind of stupid, cheesy win like that. Um, yeah, Ndidi. Okay, like, the female Ndidi works. If that guy comes strutting up on me, it feels a little out of place. feels a little unnecessary. Uh, we got Pinkurchin. That, that feels like I'm running into Quillfish or something. That's pretty cool. Snom, Frozmoth. Snom is Snom. Snom is so basic and universal and ubiquitous and all of those other words that mean the same thing. With Frozmoth, I think it might be because the wings are down, but I'm not really feeling it as much, but you can still tell it's a Frozmoth. Stonejourner, he's running at me. And yeah, how else are you going to fit that Pokemon? Because it's like all leg and then it's like a little face on top. It's going to have to do something interesting with it to represent it in this art style. Alright, I like what they did here because they're trying to make it feel like that older generation original Pikachu with a little electric zappy zap coming off of it. That works. And then we got hangry form. So that's something as well. Also, I'm trying to adjust how these fit on the fly and it may or may not be going too well. I mean like... Dragapult, that actually feels like a Generation 1 Dragapult done really well. Like, that's a dragon, crazy serpent kind of pose. So that's kind of neat. And then, like, yo, like that, this is also what it feels like to find a Dratini. And I think that that's another thing that maybe Game Freak should try to go for when designing Pokemon. It's like, if you simplify it, and if you try to, like, capture what it's like, what it was like for the first time encountering that Pokemon, how it'd be... Dreepy looks that way, at least in this. I didn't really feel that too much in Generation 8 because, like, they started making it a lot harder and a lot weirder to getting Pokemon, and then you just get them in a uh, raid anyways, and it kind of takes away from the discovery of it or whatever. But when you come to this Dreepy, it's like, oh, yeah, you're, you're going to become something cool, aren't you? I'm, I'm going to pick you up. So that's kind of neat right there. Um, elephant line, whatever, mammoth line, whatever to me. And here's the thing. I've always thought that Dracozolt, or, like, not Drac, like, all of the Zolt line... The Zolt fossils, they're just trying to have a good, happy, fun time. And, yeah, you, you can see that captured right there. Oh, we got some cool ones coming up, though. So, got the big old frozen snot. He's still just out there enjoying himself. And then we have the abominations, man. They did it. Like, 
that that's some kind of challenge right there when you're like, all right, how do you make just like one of the worst Pokemon ever fit into 2D like that? Eh. <laughs> there's Vish. He's going to do his things, and then there's Vish again. So nice. Uh, this is cool. I like these poses. Once again, like you have to fit a lot into this one for Zacian. So Zacian doesn't look as cool. Zacian is one of the better designed Pokemon like ever in general. So I think it's like really awesome that the Generation 8 mascots came through like that. But um, with the swords, like that's yeah, kind of hard to figure out. That's like if I see that strolling up, that's kind of cool. If I'm using that in battle, that's pretty cool. And then it seems really easy to get these Pokemon across feels very like Arcanine like it feels like you're dealing with some kind of big doggo Pokemon so that works and then yeah just shield so majestic pose shield guard dog win and now we're getting into the new Pokemon DLC stuff Cub Fu that's that's got some Kung Fu shenanigans going on but Urshifu looks kind of weird and there are some derp designs, there's actually quite a few, especially if you go back to like red and green and stuff, man, Mew looks like a mutant. But, you know, there, there is some derp right here, and it's, it's something funny I've noticed with almost all Urshifu art. Urshifu almost comes off as chibi, or like the proportions are hard to get right in that kind of way. It's made even harder by like trying to fit it into a square and getting its pose that shows exactly what style it is. So, Urshifu is a little off, but once again, like, that comes up, I'm like, oh, that's Urshifu, he's about to one-shot me, cool. Oh, that's, that's the, uh, not as good Urshifu that's about to slap me around a couple of times. Moltres, I guess with, like, the limited palette, it's like, what, what can you do to make it look like the Galarian Moltres? You don't have, like, Galarian Moltres is all about the cool coloration, the difference of it, but this just looks like evil Moltres instead of Galarian, like, even though Galarian Moltres kind of has that evil look, especially like Berserker and being a dark type and stuff. And the dark type is also called evil type in Japanese, I think. But I mean, you know, it, it just looks like angry, upset, Berserk Moltres, but not in the Galarian form kind of way. Zarude! Those eyes are cuter than they have any right to be, I guess, but that's the thing. Zapdos, it looks different enough towards like, he's, he's not Zapdos, is he? Galarian Articuno, though. That looks, that looks exa exact. That's like, oh, yeah, Galarian Articuno is Galarian Articuno while being looking like an Articuno. That's kind of cool. Ooh, I like that. That's spicy. That's, that's like, that's just capturing the attack animation. Like, yeah, that's your Reggie Drago. That's, that's another thing that you see back in like the old things. You don't have the animations. You can't tell the full story of the Pokemon. Sometimes the idle pose tells more about what that Pokemon's about than the actual attack animation. But no, Reggie Drago, this is what you're up against. You're up against the head of the dragon because that was what Reggie Gigas created, and you're about to get zapped by its dragon energy. And then Reggie Lucky is just a madness of electricity. I really like those. That's flamboyant. That's spicy. That's like, I'm about to do medicine. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I like how Slowpoke, yo, that's actually like, one, once again, take, we have two different representations right here that tell the story of the Pokemon equally. So we have the attack animation from the Regidrago, but then we have that idle animation where just Slowbro like glances down at his arm, like, oh, I'm just stuck with this now. But it's also like, oh, he's, it's Slowbro, but he's going to cannon you in the face. That's kind of cool. And then Galarian Slowpoke, it's really just yellow, or it's like Slowpoke with the yellow, so can't expect it to look too different. And yeah, noodle leg, rider form, kind of tricky. I have no idea what's going on over here. I can't make out almost any of this. Oh, I thought that was the other rider form for a second, but no, that's just like all Spectrier. And it's like, yeah, it's kind of hard, especially if it's looking the other way, because you kind of have like the little lashes on the Spectrier that, you know, there's something going on with this Pokemon. And the way that the story was done, you kind of need that to be animated in 3D. Like, people are like, oh, Game Freak needs to go back to 2 2D. But then we lose a lot of the story. Then we lose a lot of, like, the cool elements that can only be achieved through cutscenes like that. So I think about, all right, you go back to Generation 2, you see the little legendary dogs bounce away and stuff. That wouldn't be nearly as cool or impactful if done with the storyline that we have from Calyrex and the Steeds. So it's like, yeah... Something's lost here, but I think that's just the way that it is. Glacier looks cool, though. That just looks like 
how Celebi would be represented, so that's kind of neat. And then the rider form, kind of weird because, like, perspective, I don't really see the lance, the horse's head gets kind of big and strange, but it's like, yeah, that's, that's a thing. So yeah, you can really get a feel for some of the better designed Generation 8 Pokemon by how well they are represented in 2D. That if there's too much going on here, it doesn't scale down well, and then it's like, well, that was kind of awkward even in 3D or even, like, as the original design. But then for some of the other ones, like, I like Laser and Spectre. I think they're cool Pokemon. They feel like Pokemon, which is where Game Freak missed the mark a lot in Generations 5 and 8, I feel. So that's a thing, and yeah, it's kind of going through. Got some neat stuff. Yeah, I don't, I don't think too many Pokemon were saved. Like, a Pokemon di didn't like, I still really didn't like too much. But overall, there's, like, a lot of really cool things being shown here. And I think the, the translation worked pretty well for a lot of them. And once again, the artist is just amazing. So, hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.